And we're back with Sports Buffet number two. As you can see, I have a new um, team sport hat on. I'm going to try, Matt, to every Sports Buffet have a different um, cap on. So this is number two. This is uh, Blue Jays. Last last time was, I don't even remember. I don't remember what I just ate 20 minutes ago. But um, Sports Buffet number two, we're back. What's the feedback you've gotten on episode one? Did you talk to anybody? you get any... Um, any uh, reviews from some writers or anything? Yeah, yeah. I slid in the comments a little bit, talked <laughs> people, here and there. People were about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know. I have to check it out just to make sure I don't get something too no. crazy coming my way. <laughs> no, and even if it is, we want that. We want crazy. We want crazy passion. If you're writing True. and you're, you're putting something on there, good or bad, we respect it because then that shows that you're interested and you're engaged. But, yeah, no, I saw a couple comments. Um, it got some good views. I mean, I, I really flowed with it, and, you know, it's good. I was saying to you beforehand that now sort of just a dreary dead time of, like, uh, sports in general. So, like, finding stories is, like, not that it's tough, but it's almost just, like, they're not as juicy as they would be if it's, like, the middle of the NBA season and trade deadlines coming up or, like, football or something like that, you know? Yeah, I think we got about two or three more weeks of like tough sports stories where it's not going to probably mean too much, but yeah. it'll get, you know, we'll get back into it once football season starts in three or four weeks, once September hits. But now is always the like most dead time of the year. Like if you're not watching baseball, you're just watching Netflix. Hell yeah. And then like ESPN, it's like this is the season for them when they're doing like those like my wish, you know, like segments and like the. Peyton Manning, stupid, like throwing a football off of a fifty-story building to Chris Carter, and like, did you see that with Peyton Manning? And not to like, he's like now some he's like a comedian on ESPN, and he's like doing all these weird segments with people, and he's trying to be like super funny. I saw the trailer. Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't see any of the shows. I've always just seen the trailer, and it's him just like sitting down with the uh, head coach and just like, well, did you, Jill Montana? Did you actually? throw it to the guy in the corner of the end zone like it's like a curb your enthusiasm for just Peyton Manning fans so yeah people buy into that though people love him when he acts like that I I'm good I'll take a 30 second commercial at the Super Bowl yeah uh, cool yeah I'm like I'm not mad at him but like you're you're not a comedian like don't try and be funny like I'd rather see you do some X's and O's shit and tell me about that than like I don't know. I'm sort of second. I'm doubting myself now. I think it's like creative. Some of the shit he does, it's like corny, funny. It'll it'll get watched. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I'm not gonna watch it, but there's gonna be that range of midwestern uh, corny people, like 35 <laughs> to 50 years old, that love Peyton Manning. They're gonna yeah. watch that show. That was like when he did um, SNL, and it was like. <laughs> People just loved it, you know. He's they not a. He, it. It's not like he's like Louis C.K. or Dave Chappelle, where he's cracking like actual genuine jokes. It's just like him being awkward, like doing a dance move, and it's just like it's unexpected to see Peyton Manning do that stuff. It's like when any when any athlete switches over, to, like Dame Lillard just came out with that rap CD. If you're not like used to them doing like what they're supposed to be doing, you just automatically assume that they're trash at. Um, whatever else they're trying to do you know whether they're good or not so they don't really get that benefit of the doubt yeah it's not necessarily fair but yeah um, i'm definitely guilty of that yeah I'm not, yeah i'm, 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 I'm the same do anything else but play your sport i'm the same like everyone's saying dame cd is going to be hot um but and i and like maybe it is but like i have in my head already as i'm going to press play on when i listen to it that it's going to be garbage and like even if he's got some fire lines I'd be like, that shit was whack. Like, he's a basketball player. Like, that shit didn't even rhyme that well. Whereas, I like, feel like if I hear it, I'm just going to hear, uh, what's that? That is it Little Bow Wow, that basketball? Uh, oh, yeah, when Little Bow Wow came out with that movie. Well, well, was it him? Oh, yeah, he had basketball. But then there was, yeah. um, remember when, uh, was it Nick Carter or Aaron Carter had, like, How I Beat Shaq? Yeah. Do you remember I that? Into that quite a bit. That was a banger. That would still bump today if you put that on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. That and I want candy. That was a good one too. Yeah, there were some classics, man. Yeah. All right, let's kick it off. 
Um, I wanted to ask you because you, this is your squad, the New York Mets, man. What the hell has gotten into them? Like, well, one, what the hell has gotten into them? And two, how are they still so fucking far behind the Braves <laughs> to like get first place? They've won like a million games in a row. <laughs> That's that's what makes it so crazy is because they were that bad for so long that they put themselves in that position, you know. Yeah. So, but to win fourteen out of fifteen or whatever it was, I went to the game Saturday. Which one was that? Uh, that was uh, the seven o'clock Saturday night. That wasn't uh, the three run home run bottom of the ninth, was it? No, no, oh, oh, oh. no. That was that was the night before. Saturday was. Um, they came back in the eighth and then won it in the ninth. So, the, like, what they're doing right now is stupid. Like, I mean, like, literally every game they're going out there and it's like they're thinking they're going to win, and they're beating. The Nationals are ahead of them in the in the standings, and um, it's just funny to me that like you could their baseball season's so long that like they. When they, I think they played the Cubs, and the manager like uh, was taking heat because he got mad at a reporter or something like that. And then there was that like OD Italian looking dude on their team, who like was in the locker room and like got mad at a reporter too or something. Yeah, like that oh. seems like forty years ago now. That guy's not even on the team anymore. Oh, he's not on the team anymore. He got traded. Oh my God, who did he get traded to? Do you know? They traded him to the Phillies. Damn. So, yeah. That's a little disrespectful because it's like in the, the division. Yeah, is he a good player? He's all right. I mean, he's he's a he was our fifth pitcher, so it's oh, like, he's a pitcher. Yeah, he was he was decent for being our fifth starter. He but, reminded me of someone who would like just play a role in like major league or something like that. Like he didn't he didn't look like he didn't look like a real baseball player, but he looked like an actor who played a baseball player in a movie. Yeah, I always said he looked like uh, <laughs> what's it Johnny Depp in Secret Window. With the glasses, when he'd wear the glasses and he let his hair down, if he took off his hat, he looked like a freak. What's the dude's name so people could look him up? Jason Vargas. Jason Vargas, look him up and do like a side by side with Johnny Depp and tweet it at me and Matt, just because like I haven't seen that side by side, but I'd be curious to. Um, but yeah, it's amazing how well they're playing and like the games are mad exciting. Like, um, the game I was just talking about, they were down by three, bottom of the ninth. And Frazier hits a three-run home run to tie the game, and then they win in, like, the 15th inning or something. But the way that the stadium was just, like, oh, it was just packed. And, like, it was just, like, a nice New York night. And, like, the vibe just seemed amazing. Like, I guess, I, like, I've never really gotten that as a Yankee fan because, like, not on some humble brag shit, but they've always been, like, good. So, like, even when they do come back in, like, a regular season game, it's not as exciting as, like, the Mets because they, like, Build, they bury themselves in a hole, and then they like will do this midseason where they climb out and have this amazing stretch. So the shit is just feels more exciting, you know. Do you sense that as a Mets fan? No, absolutely. And I've always said forever too, like why can't it just be easy? <laughs> but when I went to the game Saturday and you saw how the train was rocking there, and as soon as I get off at the train station at the stop everyone's just screaming chanting cursing like going wild yeah it's like man i kind of appreciate just the ups and downs of it yeah and um you don't get that if you're 35 games over 500 like the yankees you just you're 100%. not gonna get that yeah uh, after the game because the game i went to was saturday uh we won it we were losing in the seventh came back won it um came back in the eighth after that we were walking in the parking lot, and we ended up tailgating for like another hour or so oh, after the game. That's so gangster. Just met up some, yeah, some random uh, fans were like, yo, we have some chicken, we have some hot dogs, some burgers, like, we're in this together. Oh, like, it's so dope. Talking Mets baseball and just... Yeah, just, it doesn't happen in Yankee Stadium. It's like, no. it's like either all the fans leave before they can come back and win the game, potentially, or they're like up enough where people are bouncing anyway. So like... And people are just trying to get home. I feel like Mets fans are more down to just be like, yo, game's over. What are we doing? Just posting up in the lot and just having, you know, some beers and burgers. Yeah, and that's literally what it was. It's like, ah, you know what? We're not leaving anytime soon. So what? So they're still like, so I 
the last I looked was like two days ago. They're a half a game back of the wild card, but still have like three teams in front of them, right? Yeah, so they're tied with a few teams right now for that second wild card spot. Um, the other teams in front of them aren't that great either. That's the thing. Like this, there. It's not the the National League isn't deep at all. Mm-hmm. So it is possible that we get in. Um, I, I don't think it's possible to catch up to the Braves. The Braves are actually like really good and have been yeah, they're good killing. all year. And the Mets. This is what we were supposed to do since you know april yeah we just haven't but we still have some like serious weaknesses that's gonna cause a lot more what's what's no good for them uh bullpen oh really yeah yeah, it's always been their problem it's like when i see who's warming up in the bullpen i'm like no (laughs) (laughs) please no like and it's like the guy from the radar gun yeah it's a heart attack (laughs) every time i'm like (laughs) You could just like pick someone out of the stands almost. So it is crazy on that end, but we have some serious strengths with starting pitching. Hell yeah. We do hit. We do hit. So this is I expect is us to be in it up till the very end. That's what makes me laugh about like writers and like media reporters and all this shit because it's just like they have the freedom to just write all this bullshit two weeks ago, like, oh why'd they trade for, you know, what's his name? Strollman from Toronto. Yeah. Why they trade from Strollman? He's like that guy. He's now going to like a team that sucks, and it's like the Mets are terrible. The manager should be fired. This and that, and it's just like all of that stuff doesn't even. All those articles and all that bullshit and all that like stuff people talk about on TV just doesn't even. There's no consequence to to them saying that shit because now it's like the manager looks like a, all of a sudden he's a genius, you know? Like now the Mets are amazing, and it's like all these articles probably getting written about them is like, oh, they're, you know, 15 out of 16. They're the hottest team in baseball. And it's just like, you can't fucking trust these guys because it's just like they, they don't, nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about, you know? The manager's getting paid a lot of money. He must know what he's doing, you know? Yeah, no, I agree to that too. And also, New York is like times 10 with that. Obviously, you of course. know that. Like, it's, it's crazy in New York, you yeah. know? So everything is magnified, every little move, and, you know, even some of these moves I've questioned, I'm like, why are we buying at the deadline? We're, we don't <laughs> Yeah, I guess good. so. But, but it's like, you know, all right, whatever, roll with it. But a lot of the media writers do love to pile on. They Hell yeah. love to pile Hell on. Yeah. But it all adds to it. It all adds to it. It makes it more sweeter. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you see them making the playoffs? I have to. I have to. I'm a diehard, so yeah. I can't say any other way. I'm always, I'm always like one of the more positive fans too, because Mets fans are also like highest of highs and then the lowest of lows. Like, ah, oh, we suck. We're, we're never gonna win anything. It's like the and Knicks we fans. Win four in a row, and we're like, oh man. World Series. Yeah, we got the yeah. starting rotation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I no, I, I'm in. I mean, the team has a lot of heart, man. We're just throwing up some random ass players. That's what I've always said, though. Is like these teams that like just get guys that don't make a lot of money. They called up from AAA, probably taking a little bit of juice or something like that. Um, (laughs) um, no, but for real, like guys that are just like gritty, like hungry. They play when they like hurt, and they're not like because they're trying to earn a con. You know, they're trying to earn that big contract. Like a Jose Reyes when he's young, and then like he gets paid by Miami or something like that, and it's like he's not the same dude. Yeah, and I also I don't know I believe in like the story being a big part in in teams' success, and like in sports like basketball and football, maybe it doesn't make as much sense. You know what I mean? Like usually the best of the best win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not much surprises there, Mm -hmm. but like look at the hockey with the Blues, that story there, and then baseball, you never know. So. I do. I I think there is some magic to it where you have to have some crazy stuff happen in such a long season. Like hockey's a long season. Hell yeah. Baseball's a long, long season. Incredibly long. That's why yeah. like none of that shit. Like the first couple weeks of baseball where it's like two week stretch and it's like Yankees aren't hitting home runs or like the Mets, whatever. Like you just can't take any stock in that because it's like. The last month of the season, you could go on like a 20-game win streak and all of a sudden you're right back in the wild card hunt. You know, like four games out with whatever, however, 17 games left to play. And all that shit from earlier on the season doesn't matter. But like to your point, I feel like 
yeah, like chemistry is important. Like, is the team just having fun? Like, do they vibe together? Do you have some good, like, solid core pitchers and stuff like that? Is like important, you know? Because it is. It's such a long season. It's so long. So obviously, you know that we have the talent. But I do think teams need weird things. Like, they need like good juju. Mm-hmm. They need they need some kind of weird, crazy story to happen out of this. You What's know, the Mets' weird, crazy story this year? Um. Well, they they fired their pitching coach. Oh, they did. After like a month and a half, and they hired a like an eighty-two year old man. So they got ragged on for that. Like everyone was like, "This guy can't even walk to the mound." Like yeah, they yeah. just destroyed this poor old man. Oh. It was like actually turned their rotation around. <laughs> you know, one thing that we do need, and we you know we do have our songs and stuff, mm-hmm. but I feel like a team like this needs their own like kind of like rally song, cry rally or some song. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah rally cry to get behind something well like and, a, but i feel like that starts playoff time with like a with like a saying or some shit like i mean don't the mets yeah. just always do that amazing mets thing well we actually one of our players just tweeted out like a week or so ago um because it's always uh hashtag lgm yeah yeah, yeah. Twitter. you know let's go mess yeah he just put lfgm Oh, Let's yeah, go, that works. And now that's what everyone does. That's perfect. So I think we got that now. I think we got the slogan because everyone's put in that. And you got the dude, like, I'm a huge, like, Todd Frazier was on the Yankees for a hot minute. But, like, he's that dude that will start something funky. Like, he did the, the downward thing. I think he started that. He, yep. um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that he started, you know. So I think you got, like, Frazier's that dude that will, like, just keep the vibe going. And he'll think of some, like, crafty... Even just just like an Instagram post of all the players on the plane or something like that. Like I, he's big on like that team chemistry type of shit. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. They got the right guys. In yeah, that yeah, yeah. Right now, which is that's what's important. Yeah. So we're in on the Mets. Um, hopefully, we don't lose all of our Midwest fans and everything like that. But the Cubs sucked. I mean, all the other teams are boring. I haven't really followed their storylines too much. But like, Mets are exciting. I don't even know. Like, what are the San Francisco Giants doing? Like, do they still play baseball now? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> like, um, I don't. I can't keep. Like, as much as no other sports are on, like, I I can't follow what the Oakland A's are doing right now. It's tough. It's tough. Like the Giants, they're hovering. You know, uh, as for Midwest teams, we thought the Brewers would be a lot better. Yeah, they're, they're not much, but that's why. There weren't many sellers at the deadline too, because everyone is just blah. Uh-huh. No one's. No one's really bad. No one's really good in terms of like talking about the NL. Really. Yeah, unless you're like the Baltimore Orioles or some shit. And, right, you know, the Orioles are on. awful, and the Astros are amazing. Yeah, you know that, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Other so, than that, that's why there was a lot of just straight up stalemates at the trade deadline. Yeah, um, I want to get into this. Wasn't on my list, but I want to get into fantasy. I don't know if you have do you play fantasy? Yeah. You do baseball? Yeah. I, how do you keep up with that? <laughs> I, yeah, I got no life, I guess. <laughs> no, you do have a life. I don't know. Like, <laughs> shout out to people who play fantasy or, like, even just, like, video games in general or something like that. The fact, like, someone asked me if they, I wanted to play, and this goes into my next topic, which is, f- like, football. But I can't keep up with what I'm doing on a daily basis. To, like, I don't, I don't want to turn on my computer or go to my phone and, like, set a lineup. Like I said, how do you know what – the St. Louis Cardinals second baseman did two nights ago if he's on your freaking fantasy team. I know. Well, they set it up really nicely with that. I know what you're saying. Like, but you could literally click seven day stats. That's all I do. I don't do anything too crazy. Who's been hitting? Who's been hot the last seven days? I don't need to know anything more. And then so I'll you set, set your lineup there. for that week or something like that? I do it day by day. Oh, God. So what's the but seven day thing? It's just, it shows that player's statistics over the last week. Oh, okay. So like, you could be like, oh, this guy's been playing. 22, sit him. Okay, know? okay. But, but oh. it, it is, I mean, I do it at work. I do it like, yeah. <laughs> I do it like when I'm supposed to be doing something else. <laughs> or I do it like if I'm on the subway or something, you know? Yeah, I guess when you just have some downtime, it's like, oh, let me set my roster real quick or something like that. But with baseball, I think it's just so many games. And now football is starting. I want to ask you what your thoughts on preseason football are because I think they've – like everyone gets all jazzed up for the Hall of Fame game. And like 
like maybe the starting quarterback will throw one pass or something like that, but the rest of it is just showing like the Hall of Fame guys in their gold jacket in some small ass Ohio stadium, and then the game's just boring as shit. Is anyone watching that whole game? Uh, I f- so I feel boring. like there are people are like there's like actually no. I feel like people build up the whole buzz. It's like, oh, now there's no more weeks until we don't have any football, and maybe they watch the first snap or something like that. But then they'll just tune back in in the fourth quarter. And like this, this, this Pro Bowl, this uh, Hall of Fame game was actually pretty exciting. I think there was like the Broncos drove and like scored a touchdown, like with like a minute left or something like that. So maybe for like gamblers, it was exciting at the end. But I don't. There's no. There's no reason for you to be watching this. <laughs> like, like, there's no, like the even the Jets Giants preseason game. I don't, I don't care enough about our third string roster guys who will never really play. Like, unless you are such a diehard that you're like, this third string linebacker, you know, may have a chance to become our starting linebacker, and you want to see like the growth of these guys. Yeah, but like, does anybody really care about like the growth of an NFL player? Yeah, no. I I watched till they had the. Uh... The rain delay, the thunderstorm warning. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they had that, right? Didn't the game go on later in the Hall of Fame game? Oh, yeah, no, the, oh, the Jets, the Jets, the Jets game. Yeah, like, like shit like that. It should almost just be like it's a crazy rain delay and be like, all right, we made our money off ticket sales already. Like games, oh, yeah, games canceled, guys. Sorry. And yeah. I don't think, I don't think you would have one complaint. No. No and one's I, sending an email saying like, hey, you guys didn't finish the game because it's just like. They went, they experienced it for a little bit, had a couple beers, and they probably saved them money. I find it crazy the amount of people that go to these games. They either could just, it's got to be a cheap game to take a kid or to take, like, your girl who doesn't yeah. know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, this is actually a really important game, sweetie. Yeah, like, oh, I spent a lot is, on these tickets. You see how exciting this is right now? Or, like, it sells out in, like, like, Kansas City probably has a phenomenal preseason atmosphere. Just because, like... They fucking love football in Kansas City, like, yeah, like Chicago. I, I had friends that were like giving away tickets. It was stupid for the first preseason preseason game because the coach is like more to do in Chicago than Kansas that's City what, in general. That's what I'm like. Even Seattle, I feel like it's like preseason. This stadium will probably be type empty. Green Bay probably gets a good um pre like preseason pack out. Oakland, no, I don't think anybody's going to that shit. Now, it's probably the last game of the preseason is the best to watch, right? Because then you you actually get no. I thought it was the third the third snacks. game of the season is like when when all the guys play for for like a diesel amount of time, oh, right? The second to last game. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is that what that is? Because yeah. the last one is like I don't I don't even think they dress like the um, the main guys. Yeah, don't get hurt. Yeah, and it's like that's their mentality. It's almost like watching uh uh the Pro Bowl game or whatever like that, like. There's no, they don't get any, except for that second to last game where guys maybe are ramping it up a little bit, but you're not going to get, like, OBJ, maybe one play, he runs hard. But, like, is he really going 100% in some preseason game? No, it is it is a waste of time. I get, obviously, you got to do it. Every sports league has a preseason, I get it, but nothing is more glorified than NFL preseason. Oh, it's a it's. Do you buy yeah. into the do you buy into the fact or the argument that like, if you're a top notch athlete like that, you you almost can't rev it down. So like maybe we are getting like a hundred percent of these guys when they're in the in that third preseason game. There's got to be some guys like that, right? Because that's probably how I was with like intramurals and stuff. No, but like you when know? you play when you played baseball. All right, so if you had, like, uh, a regular season game, which is obviously important, it matters to your stats or whatnot, if you had a scrimmage, are you going, I mean, are you going just as hard as, like, an a in-team scrimmage? Are you going just as hard as, like, a, a game against, you know, another college or something? Like, I'm going hard, but my head's not, I'm not in the greatest mood with a scrimmage. I never was. Yeah. Because, like, I knew, like, even if I got a hit, like, fuck that doesn't count yeah, exactly I, I was like obsessed with that and averages and shit like this fucking means nothing or even if like you give up a monstrous home run or some shit you're like okay yeah like oh, you're, wow. you're you're still fine after the game because ultimately that shit didn't matter you know like these 
players probably are like, oh, I can just air this ball out or some shit. It doesn't matter on my incompletion rate or whatever. Well, to a certain degree, right? Because Oh, well, the, some of the guys are trying to make the, the squad. Right, the Jets kicker who missed uh, yeah, two what about extra the... points. He retired. <laughs> I just saw that. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I feel bad for him, man. He's 20, retired. He was all in his head. I, I felt so bad for him. How? So he just straight retired, not even like, I'm going to step away. Like, Because usually when they miss kicks, this is what I said about the Bears kicker, the dude who hit the pole or whatever. I was like, you watch. Like, he's getting shitted on in Chicago by everybody. He's going to sign with, like, Tampa Bay next year and be, like, 35 for 35 and Pro Bowl kicker just because there's no stress on his shoulders. And, and he's actually a good kicker. Like, the Jets kicker is one of a very few amount of people that can kick field goals for a living. Maybe don't retire and just go to, like, the Detroit Lions and become, like, a fucking all-franchise player. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's pretty much what kickers do, right? They last so long because they do that. They'll just like get cut one week, bounce to on, another team. You'll be on three teams in a season. Yeah, but like, but it's, I mean, I he was, I think he was done with football when I saw his face. Like he's like, oh, dude, he was, he was coming nowhere close. Like it was one, ugly. I hate to hate on players, yeah, because you know, I did feel bad for him, but the one. I, I think like me and you could have probably got closer. He like shanked it fifty feet left. Like it wasn't even close. <sighs> That's like one of those ones that like no disrespect to girls, but like when a girl get up there in like a kicking con- contest and like someone's holding it and it's just like I don't even know how it goes in this direction. But it's or not a guy can do it too. <laughs> but it'll just like straight to like the left. And it's just one of those that you're just like yeah. How'd the ball even go in that direction? Like, you, all you have to do is just put your foot straight, and the ball probably goes straight. Yeah, it's, you would think. I mean, I I don't think I could kick, like, a five-yard field goal, honestly. That doesn't even exist. But, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't, I couldn't do it. I think if you take the approach of, like, old, you remember old school kickers would just hit it, like, straight on? With their toe? Yeah, yeah. That's how I kicked my whole life. That's what I'm saying. You could probably make like a 15-yard field goal by just putting your foot like straight under it and trying to loft it forward. Yeah, I played soccer kicking with my toe. I do uh, <laughs> like kickball with my toe. <laughs> do you remember Do you remember when the the Bears actually after that whole parky situation did the, like at a local bar, they did like kick a field goal and yeah. like win a year surprise uh, supply of beer or something. But it was like snowy outside. And nobody made it. And, like, these straight, like, soccer players came out and, like, former um, kickers came out and nobody could drill the kick. But, like, some guys hit it close, but other people were straight, like, laugh right, like, hitting the camera guys type of shit. And that's what it sounds like the Jets kicker was doing the other night. Yeah, Parky was also, that was, like, 40 yarders he was missing, yeah, too. Yeah, his were diesel. Like, All right, yeah, it's a gimme for him, but, you know. So, dude Parky. retired. You think, yeah. ugh, and he's 28 years old? 28. Done. He's got to I mean, like, I feel like it'll be like he'll sit out for... He'll definitely be in some guys, some team's training camp attempting kicks again. You know, like, that's a gift. And, like, he definitely could kick field goals if he's, like, in a Jets uniform, you know? I, he didn't look like he could kick. Well, was he, like, was he sitting on the bench just, like, fucking dejected? Like, I just want to go home right now? Yeah, they kept showing him. Oh, that's the worst. Like, he was like next to someone else someone else was like patting him on the back and he was like talking like as if he was trying to explain his missus like, oh. uh, i don't know man i think i just would <laughs> not speak yo the camera guys like the camera guys sort of fuck up your flow in a little bit because like they know to put the camera on you in like the worst times like they're gonna put the camera on um what's his name uh steve bartman and like they try to play like, oh, guys, please don't rally on to him. You know, he's just a normal fan. But then every four innings, they'll fucking show him, and they'll be like, just thinking back, what if this guy does – we're going to replay that thing again. And the camera will, like, pan to him. And it's like they'll pan to the kicker, and it's like, I hope none of these players are really getting on the kicker tonight. And Jets fans, take it easy on the kicker. But it's like a random third and seven drive in like the third quarter and they'll pan to the kicker it's like this, this is what he looks like with his helmet off. <laughs> exactly <laughs> they show him like 40 different times like pacing up and down the sidelines and you're like you're gonna get this guy killed like yeah, please awesome. stop <laughs> um yeah no that's that's a shame for that guy that sucks but like 
you gotta make your fucking kicks, dude. Like you're you're an NFL kicker, you gotta make your kicks. Um yeah. so you're in or out on, on preseason football. <laughs> Done. Out. Out, right? September. I'll yeah. See. That's I'm Start ready up. for regular season. I'm even down on like I'm I'm really I really get jazzed up for like week one. But like week three, four, I can go without. Like just skip to like week seventeen. True. I mean, <laughs> it also depends with like we're out usually at that point too as yeah. Jets fans. Yeah, so that's it's a good like point. I mean, I'm not tuning in by week six or seven. I'm like, all right, it's I over. know. And it sucks <laughs> like and it's not like baseball where it's like you only get a couple games. It's like if you go like one and six or something like that, it's, it's a wrap. Over. Yeah, like it's over, what, yeah. You start thinking like, Oh, we can go like what is it, nine and six or eight and seven. It's just like no, maybe we get a wild card spot, and Patriots are like fifteen and one, and like all these other teams are just so good. Yeah. So football, I'm I'm not a fan of preseason football. I'll even put it out there: I'm not a really big fan of football in general. Like some people are so fucking diehard about football and so jazzed up about getting beers and chips and watching football. Like I'll put the Jets game on. And maybe because I'm not in New York and it's I, I don't get my team's game out here, but, like, the Bears will be playing the Panthers. And I'm just like, that could care less. Like, I, I'll change the channel to, like, I don't know, Comedy Central or something other than football. That's fair. I mean, what I've been doing recently is the, uh, what's it called? The Red Zone? The Red Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just instant action. I guess so. I my again my like my brain doesn't function with too much shit going on. So like I need like one game, and not like looking at eight end zones. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just too. It's like you got fucking quarterbacks rolling, like timeouts and commercials on one screen. There's just too much colors and too much shit going on. But I am a fan of picture in picture. I would like to have like my main TV show on the screen and then on the side screen have like some other shit that i was watching just so i know when the commercial's over or something i can't believe that's not a thing yet i think it is but like only certain tvs like have capabilities to do it it's almost like sap when they're like push the sap button on your controller yeah i'm like where the fuck is the sap button i've never never seen an sap button on a controller it's true actually yeah never thought about that they make it sound so simple like monday night football it's like they just did the fucking national anthem and they're like panning down and the smoke's still clearing and it's like thanks for watching now you can wa- you know to watch us in SAP just click SAP click your SAP button or some shit to watch this in Spanish and never never once in my life have I been at someone's house I hang out with Hispanics I hang out with Dominicans Puerto Ricans they all love fucking football never once have I ever even like all my white friends or black friends, I've never been to their house once. And when that's happened, them be like, let's try and put this shit in Spanish for a second to see if it actually works. <laughs> Have you ever had anybody try that shit? No, I've never even thought about it. I've just always ignored that command because it's like, well, that they're not talking to me. That's what I'm saying. But like you would, it's almost like the wet paint shit. Like, obviously, like don't touch the wet paint, but you're like, I might go touch that shit. So that's the fair. dude's like, telling just to you. See what it is. Uh, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what happens? Do you push the SAP button and all of a sudden, like John Gruden and you know the other guy just turn Hispanic and they're like two different commentators now? Imagine that. <laughs> it's just a whole other world. Like your quarterback, like Sam Darnold, now has like a little bit of tan to him, and everything just starts looking <laughs> Hispanic. <laughs> it's like it. it there's like more Taco Bell commercials. Yes, game in Green Bay in January, and then you turn it over to SAP, and it's just like they got like palm trees and the sun is out. <laughs> they were coming from Azteca, the stadium in Mexico where the USA Mexican team always play each other. Mexico City, Mexico. I I'm mean, gonna try that I, shit. I'm gonna have to check my remote after this. That's what I'm saying. Week one, we're gonna come back on fucking sports buffet, whatever episode it is, and I'm gonna put a recording. I'm going to somehow insert a recording of me trying to uh, get the SAP function to work on my on my, <laughs> on my Monday night football game. Yeah. We'll do it week three when the Jets – I think the Jets play the I'm Browns in. week three. Yeah, I'm in for that. I once tried putting my TV in um, like Spanish because I was trying to learn Spanish. So I figured like let me try and like change it so like shit gets translated in Spanish. I think I did it with the subtitles. Because I don't think they could do it with like TV shows and shit like that. 
Yeah, so it's telling you in English, and it's yeah, or putting they're saying it in English still, but it's Spanish on the subtitles are Spanish. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't yeah. really work. Where I, it didn't work too well. I gave up on it. I think after like a day. No, and that's um, that's like that's that's never gonna work. That's your brain is not gonna work fast enough to I keep know. up with that. People say that shit. They're like, oh, like if you really want to learn a language, just go to that country and fucking. Just start doing stuff and let people talk to you. And maybe it works, but like <laughs> I try to like think about it and I'm like, it wouldn't work because it's like you don't know the words they're saying. So like him, like someone saying a sentence to me, I'm still going to be like, what the fuck are you saying? You're telling me to go on vacation for two weeks and just try to figure it out. Yeah, pretty much. Like, oh, you want to learn the language and the like the, the accents and like the, you know, the slangs. Go live in Dominican Republic for a year, and like you'll pick it up. But I just don't. I I find that hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, for a year maybe, but I mean, like, if you're saying just go out there for a couple weeks, like as you're traveling, and just hit the SAP button. Yeah, (laughs) I'm gonna just say uh, get that Duolingo going or something. Yeah, Duolingo will be popping. All right, so we're gonna check the SAP button. We're out on fantasy football. No, no, no. You're in on. You're in on fantasy football. I'm out on fantasy football. Um, we're both out on NFL preseason. Preseason. Next thing I wanted to ask you about was ESPN just recently started the Ocho channel. So it's a play on, obviously, Dodgeball, the famous movie. I think I think that's where it started was ESPN, the Ocho from Dodgeball. And um, they had the Dodgeball championships and all this on this station called ESPN, the Ocho, which was like all obscure sporting events and stuff like that. So now ESPN actually has an Ocho channel where it's like weird. One of them was a ping pong table and it was like a soccer ball and they had to hit it with their head. And they were like playing ping pong with their head. And one guy did like this. It's almost like he was break dancing. He like put his butt on the table like he was doing like a spin break dance move so he can get closer to the net and then like head butted the ball down on like a slam. And the announcer called it like a b-boy slam. So is this like human foosball? No, because foosball is the one with the they they do use their feet, yeah. You know, and and it's and it's strange. it's a um, yeah, foosball. They use the feet. This was like ping pong with your head, <laughs> and I don't know what oh, it was like called over a net. Over a net, it was a ping pong table. It was an actual ping pong table, and the guys were standing. It was like they were playing ping pong without holding a paddle. Without using a ping pong ball, and someone substituted in a soccer ball. I mean, that sounds like the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> it sounds like the stupidest thing ever. And how do you figure out that you're good at this stuff? Like, is there any weird sports that like you play with your friends or anything like that? Like that, like they're like, oh, Matt's good at taking this cup and like getting it to stick to the wall with a little bit of beer left in the cup or something like that. Yeah, I don't have many talents like that. <laughs> um... <laughs> If I knew that, maybe I'd have a chance to go on ESPN. That's what I'm saying. If then. there was some type, of, like whoever figured out the bottle flip challenge, knew that like when there was a little bit of water left in their cup, that they were really good at flipping it and to land. Now I think that's what that's probably gonna be on the Ocho if it's not already is the bottle flip challenge. But they have, um, you know, like those stackable cups. Yeah, and actually, like, uh, yeah, I'm not good enough at that. Have you yeah. tried those? Yeah. Yeah. How? Like just with solo cups and you just like we're just trying to like stack no, and I, detach them? Like the official stackable plastic cups. You, yeah, it's a big thing in uh, phys ed. For real? For elementary kids, yeah. What? So like yeah. are they the same as solo cups or there's got to be like a different type of thing to it, right? No, they got some stick to it. You know, they're like they're like hard plastic and they're small. Yeah. So you could just like... <laughs> and it really works like that like can you really get it to the point where wait so you'll have them stacked already so the point is to like to like to collapse them yeah you have them stacked already that's how i did it because on like espn from what i've seen in the past like they do the other shit too like they'll be like so they build up and build down Yeah. yeah that's that's another thing too and it's usually like i think it's like five four three two one the way it goes so it does go like a tower yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. four three two yeah like that um so it's like a pyramid um 
and it's kind of fun. Would you watch it on ESPN? No. <laughs> you say that, but if it was on ESPN, you like, would you maybe watch it because you're like connected to it? Like, yeah. So, and what I would do is like, I try to beat their time. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Like, something. yeah, okay. it's sort of interesting watching this weird shit because I've never seen anybody play ping pong with their head using a soccer ball. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'm stopping for that, it just unless it's out of confusion. Like, yeah, that's... What's going on. Yeah. Anyone who now, sits there, like, for an extended amount of time with, like, some popcorn and their dinner, watching, like, I, I don't know what other weird shit they had. Well, they had dodgeball was one, and there was, like, a USA team versus Canada. And it's, like, maybe people watch dodgeball because that's a little bit more popular, like, sport. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's a little exciting. But, like... They had like cornhole championships, and it's just like there's like these overweight people. No disrespect to overweight people, but like anyone could literally play that sport. Yeah, and well, like, no. you're a better tosser of the cornhole thing than I am. Like, I could do that. I could do that. There are some really good cornhole players, though, that just like will mop the floor with you. Really? Yeah. Like, they, dude, it's like in my hometown, yeah. they have an indoor league. For real? Yeah. Yeah, and, and guys, guys are like constantly their... like cranking out that center spot. Yeah, and they do. They like meet at like some town hall type place, and they have their own custom bags that they bring. Jeez, like their n- fucking uh, initials stitched <laughs> into the bags, <laughs> and they have a case that they come in. And no way. Who just throw hot, man? Just constantly just flicking it up. That's there. insane. That's yeah. insane. There's so many like if you go to like a barbecue at someone's house, they're almost guaranteed to have some weird game that's just like a family game that they've always played or like it's some new game. Like Can Jam became popular with the you know, with the trash cans and throwing the frisbee and now spike ball's big. But there's also this game where like you have a horseshoe. You ever play this and there's like a pole in the ground and you gotta throw the horseshoe and like you gotta clink the pole and the closest to it like gets a <laughs> Point or whatever like that. Isn't that called horseshoes? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's been around a, a long time. <laughs> I've never played that shit. Man, we don't play that Look, shit in Westchester. Horseshoes have been around since like the 1800s. <laughs> I never played that shit, man. Fuck horseshoes. That game was terrible. I was like, what's the purpose of this? Like, they're like, oh, you got to clink the horseshoe off the pole, and if it makes a sound and drops, and it's like, okay, like that doesn't sound fun to me. And then we gotta go walk and pick them up and do it again. Dude, I hate going to someone's like if they're having a barbecue or something, and I get forced to play these stupid games. Yeah, I don't want to play them. I'd rather just hang out, sit and talk, and chill. Whatever, you know, just chill. I don't need to be entertained by um, cornhole or horseshoes or there, anything. There's. Have you ever played this game? There's. <clears throat> I don't know if it's just the East East Coast thing, so maybe you have played it, or it's like an upstate New York thing. But there's, uh, like, a plastic, like, um, shape thing like this. There's, like, three balls. Ladder ball, ladder ball. And there's, like, yeah, like, two balls. And you got to throw it, and it, like, like twirls yeah. over. the. I hated that game. It's stupid. Yeah, it's, like, there's a red team and a blue team, and you got to throw these balls, and it's, like, the, the different levels are the three, point two, system. One. Yeah. It's so dumb, and every time I played it, the fucking ladder broke every time. Like it falls over or like it just yeah because it's like that it's so flimsy yeah it's PVC pipe just, type of shit <laughs> and it just it would just fall or just break apart every time yeah yeah fuck that sport ESPN will probably have that on their show another thing that's big that would definitely this might even make like ESPN two is um the axe throwing is super huge now. I'm cool with that. I mean, I don't want to. I don't have a desire to do it, but I'm fine with that being on the Ocho. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Can we make a trade? Trade the does bowling. Yeah. Does bowling go from ESPN two to the Ocho? Oh man, don't disrespect bowling like that, dude. Like bowling, bowling is like like ABC should get some bowling shit. We're talking about hobbyist sports. That's kind of what that is. I like bowling. Bowling is so far from the Ocho. Like I said, it's like a Saturday night ABC prime time. Like, what? fucking Jeff Van Gundy and Mike Breen should be calling bowling events because bowling 
is the, is the shit. Bowling's on the come up too because did you see that guy pop for performance enhancing drugs? No way. Someone got caught in bowling yeah, for doing drugs. Yeah, bowler got just got caught for roids. <laughs> so we're on the come up of bowling, man. <laughs> Once we, you know, those dudes are gonna be flinging that thing. Oh, that's so great. I will trade the Tour de France to be on the Ocho with with. I will take I'll take dodgeball on ESPN2 and put like the Tour de France on um I'll also take the Australian Open and put that on the Ocho cuz that shit doesn't deserve really to be on What sport is the Australian Open? Tennis. <laughs> yeah, we could trade that. <laughs> and it's also like 4 in the morning, so if like your shit's not going to be on primetime, then we're going to give you like a whack channel. You you you'll have no, to okay. put it on the Ocho. That's fair. So we're in on the Ocho? Yeah, we'll keep it around. Okay, cool. Why not? Ocho stays around for a little bit. People are hating on the Ocho because there's no designated like women's channel. And they were like, how does like ESPN put like this crazy funky channel before like an all women's channel? I mean, I'll give fifty percent of the Ocho's content to women <laughs> if they want to create some kind of It could of be sport. like a yeah, fifty like, fifty Go ahead. Yeah, like an all women's. Uh, who knows what type of? I don't want to say some messed up. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> um, staying on the women's topic though, um, Brittany Griner got into like this big brawl. It was like the Mercury were playing. I don't know some WNBA team. I think the Mercury and the Liberty is like the the extent of my WNBA knowledge. Maybe the Storm, Storm Fever. Liberty, Lynx, uh, good. Mercury, Suns. Right? Suns, Mystic, yeah. Sun? Mystic. No, Mystic is its own thing. That's Washington. Oh, I thought it's all right. I, thought it was, <laughs> I said Mystic Suns. I was like, Mystic Connecticut Suns. Oh, no, no, Connecticut oh, Suns. Connecticut. Connecticut Suns, Mystic are a team. There might yeah, be yeah. a soul. I think SOL is a, a, a team. Chicago Sky. Actually, you have a good amount. Are you making w. up names? No, no, no. It was a real. <laughs> the Florida um, airliner, the Florida clouds. <laughs> um, so anyway, so Brittany Griner, um, she's sort of been known to have a hot temper. I think she's gotten to like altercations before in the WNBA. But this was like big news for the WNBA. There was like, to your point last week, it was like a um, one of those alerts on my phone was like Brittany Griner gets into huge altercation with girl. And we just watched the video before we came on air, and it was like, they got tangled up for a rebound. She went after her. The other girl ran away, and then Griner ran after her and was, like, punching the referee. It was, like, a little altercation. But, like, for the WNBA, like, they sort of have to, like, blow those events out a little bit to, like, get some buzz. Because it's hard, one, for women to, like, dunk and stuff, so it's like they can't generate the same, you know, publicity than, like, the NBA does with like a LeBron dunk or something where it's like a little scuffle like that would just make the highlight reel in the regular highlights, you know? So are you saying they should make this like hockey and have like a penalty box for the WNBA? <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. It's like, all right, two minutes rough and go ahead. Yeah, just <laughs> just go at it, just start fighting. No, you know what they should do? Bring it back to the Ocho is when they <laughs> want to fight – they go on those two, remember Gladiators, where you had the yes. two pillars, yeah. and then you had the sticks, and you had to knock each other off? Yes. They do that, and the loser goes in the penalty box. Yes. And when they do that, you have to flip over to the Ocho, because <laughs> that's what it's on. It, so regular ESPN blanks it out. They black it out. And they're like, now go right. to the Ocho. Hit the Ocho press, button on your controller. Press the SAP button, <laughs> and then you get to watch that fight. Yeah, oh, that's that's actually a great idea. And while you were saying that, I was almost thinking like the loser of the gladiator fight, the other team gets like two more players on the court. Like WNBA should play like seven on seven or something like that. Like do well, something that, more exciting where like more points are being scored or like the court just looks crazy packed. Like make it look different. Like do you don't have to follow the idea. same rules. Like do something funky. Like. I don't know, do four on four. Maybe score more points. Like the court is more spread out or something like that. 
Well, that's why I liked. Did you see during their All Star game? I no. Think it was a few weeks ago. They were um, doing their own subs, like it was hockey. So they were like, like it was a shift. Like they were just like tagging someone in. All oh, right, for real? So, yeah. So I kind of like that. That they is are pretty cool. Kind of leaning towards like, all right, let's make this like entertaining. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's almost like, not like it's almost a little sad a little bit that like they have to use like not that exciting of a fight to try and like generate big buzz around the WNBA. It's like try and get more creative and do something like you did with the all-star game. Like you said, like with like a tag in system or like have a player, like be the coach or something like that. Like just get funky with it where it's more interesting than like me tuning into them, not even fighting. And I didn't even want to see that. And I was like, I don't want to read a headline and that to be the reason why I go to the WNBA. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But they they are looking at alternatives, ways to spice up the game a little bit. Yeah. So take my idea and run with it. Yeah, exactly. It, that's free. You can use that one from Matt. Mm-hmm. Next one, back to the NBA, is the famous now known as Rich Paul rule. So I think the NCAA made a rule that if you're going to represent um, a college or like maybe yeah a high school athlete going to college – that you have to have a bachelor's degree. And this was big because Rich Paul, LeBron's agent representative, also like uh, agent representative for a lot of NBA players, uh, I think he's like the founder or whatever of Clutch Sports, he doesn't have a bachelor's degree, so they a lot of people feel that they created this rule because he represents a lot of the new and up-and-coming guys. And now recently, the NCAA received a lot of feedback and pressure and whatever, and they now said that you don't have to have a bachelor's degree if you want to represent a guy. I saw a tweet that had me die and laugh, and they said Rich Paul has enrolled in the University of Phoenix online. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually epic. If uh, oh, that's genius. <laughs> the internet's undefeated with like things that they think of right away after like a situation will happen or like someone creating amazing. some type of gif. Um, now. What happens, like, because you know how celebrities will get, like, an honorary degree? Oh, that's a you good question. Saying, yeah. Some some college could just be like, all right, come speak at our commencement in May. You get your Like, he's from degree. Ohio, and, he, like, Ohio University, like, just wants publicity for their school. And, yeah, you're right, and gives them, like, an honorary right. bachelor's, honorary master's degree. Yeah. Shaq got that. Shaq got like a sher- like a like a admissions to the sheriff department or whatever, and I guess that it was technically allowed because he like went out on the force a couple days, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's interesting. Man, oh. I don't think anyone's brought that up. You should tweet that. <laughs> I'm all about trying to find loopholes, so if yeah. I can help someone else out, I guess, yeah, you know, why not? No, it's a good point. But it's interesting because a lot of these kids coming up now are like they're from like tough areas and a lot of the people that represent them are usually like their parents who are young that like didn't have a great education no background growing up you know and like they're fortunate or whatever they've worked hard that their kid is in a position to like get recruited into college and they probably you know might not have bachelor's degrees you know or high school degrees or whatnot um so it's interesting that the NCA would put that into the rules, but they probably realize that like there's a lot of people out there that are representing these kids that if they kept that in there are going to find alternative ways to, you know, to bypass that one year that they need until they go to the NBA, you know? Yeah, and I think it's, you know, I understand if they got to take a test at, at NCAA headquarters. Yeah. I, I understand if... They need experience. Okay, so you had a couple of years as an intern, and then you were an assistant. There's your three years of experience. You know, I get that. That means you're trustworthy mm-hmm. to some degree. I don't really get the need to have a bachelor's. I mean, they could just go get it in the most useless major, and then and then they're good. Yeah. So I don't get that part. And what are you saying to people that have gotten an associate's degree? Like, we went to two-year schools. Like, is that no good? Like, should we not be getting associate degrees anymore? Like, if we've figured out the field we want to, you know, be in? It just it just seems so stupid, that rule. And it's like, that's what the NCA is, just a bunch of, like, old farts that are just trying to keep out these young guys who are, like, changing the culture of the basketball industry. 
Yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't even like Rich Paul. But, yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's made enough of a name for himself to be kind of like outlawed and banned by the NCAA. Almost. Yeah, it also helps when your best friend growing up is LeBron James. It's almost like True. me and Kyle, like, people probably hate me and they're like why does this guy have a chance to do what he does but and like he's taking advantage of that opportunity though like that's yeah, you know no. what i mean like and he's yeah, done a good job he's signed other guys but like you don't know how much it also helps to have lebron james saying hey come join our team we'll get you on an nba team you know yeah no absolutely so there's that but i mean he's doing a good job you know, he still gets clients going to teams and stuff like that. So good for him that they took that away. He can continue to get young, talented guys going to uh, major programs and still probably get paid a dick ton of money because the NCAA is corrupt and guys will still be getting paid and they'll be figuring out ways for them to go to the school. Talk that talk. <laughs> Next, I wanted to ask you, and I've been out of the wrestling loop, but I was scrolling through Twitter because I was trying to find topics. And like I said, now is a tough time, so so I was reaching on this one. But I was a big fan of Goldberg back in the day. And just recently at SummerSlam, he came out, and the pictures I saw of him, he looked jacked as fuck. And he said he's 53 years old, but he came out, and he was spearing people, and he just looked like he hadn't missed a beat. He's still on the juice, right? He's. I mean... <laughs> He's got to be. I, I don't think you can. There's, he's got to be doing some type of medicine that, like, he looks that good at 53. The think fact right. that, like, he's got the, like, my dad is, I think, 74. And, you know, he wears, like, the same type of underwear that Goldberg wears in the wrestling, you know? But Goldberg, like, fills him out and looks good. And, like, my dads are sagging a little bit more. But, like, it's impressive. There's also a 20-year gap difference there, too. But like, give Goldberg, whatever he's taking, it's working because he looks good as shit. Yeah, no, he's he looks awesome. I guess he did well uh, last night, too. Because oh, I well, guess it's scripted. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he had a great performance. Oh, he did so good, man. He was training so hard. He, he nailed was the jackhammer so well. Yeah, it was, it was really – it was uh, – it was a tough. It was a tough battle. <laughs> his spear was working. Spear was working. He had all his mechanics working. It was great. The referee three counted him right away. Man, I don't know how he won. The other guy was a big favorite. <laughs> but but wrestling fans are a little different. Where they are like critical of guys and how they look and if they that make is it true. look good or not. That is true. Especially so, like, if you're an old school guy coming back. You know, yeah. like there is that you you get that benefit of the doubt nostalgia like nostalgia benefit of the doubt where it's like oh it's Brett the hitman heart you know cut him a break you know he's older but then then after that barrier they're like but he does look like shit a little bit you know why are they rolling him back out <laughs> whereas Goldberg probably I don't think anybody could say that about him the way that I saw him, that he looked it looked like it was like in a time capsule like they took him out of like 30 years ago and he was just prime time Bill Goldberg spearing motherfuckers Fans were praising him for last night. I guess he had his uh, his match with Undertaker. Like, oh, he wrestled the Undertaker. Than, no, well, this was like a little less than a year ago. Oh, okay. And it went bad, from what I heard. They were oh. just like two seven year olds, oh. just like hugging. Oh. And so they both got their redemption. Um, and Goldberg last night, they said looked way better than he did like a year ago. Good for him. Yeah, he had a couple years, like you said, to get up on that juice, get it right. Undertaker's got a little bit of a belly now. I've seen some recent wrestlings where it's like he wears that. He wears the overall spandex. Yeah, yeah. He's getting a little bit of a getting a little bit of a gut, and it's like, what is the head of the WWF going to go to the Undertaker and tell him he's got to get on a diet? Hell no! You're lucky that he's there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, so shout out to the OGs of wrestling who are still doing their thing. Uh, Stone Cold actually is making his rounds. I guess he's got a new TV show out, so he's been on a lot of like channels pumping his stuff maybe i'll get him on corn's world yeah think he'll come <laughs> yeah hit him up he's got his shit to promote i'm gonna hit him up stone cold might be my next guest so stay tuned to corn's world last thing i wanted to ask you about i saw this before we jumped on 16 years ago today madden 2004 
with Mike Vick on the cover. Most unstoppable player in Madden of all time. It's got to be, right? has to be. Even to this day, it was insane. It's like if you played someone who was the Falcons, it was a cheat code. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was not fair. Like you did a quarterback rollout, and this guy's speed got around the corner every single time. I feel like the one with Vic on the cover though wasn't the one that he was a beast. Like I think there was a year before, and it might have been like Donovan McNabb on the cover or something, and Vic was like. Vic was like unreal in the game. To your point, it was like he roll out and touchdown every single time. And then I think 2004 with him on the cover, the creators sort of like adjusted it a little bit where he he was still a beast, but he he didn't get that corner every single time and run for a touchdown. Like there was a year, and I could be messing up. Like if this if he was the beast in 2004 with him on the cover, and then the next year was like McNabb and they changed it, but there was a big jump from year to year. In that 2003-2004 era, when Vic was uh, amazing, and then like the writers the next time changed it, so like he had to do more throwing, and he'd actually get caught on a rollout. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was just one year where he was like, it was insane. I mean, he was a creative player. Like he, it might have been Dante Culpepper on the cover or something like that, or that was way back, like 2000 or something. I don't know. It was crazy though. I remember like always trying to like I would like if I was playing against the Falcons, I never picked them, but if I was playing against the Falcons, I'd always like pick a linebacker to be on defense and I'd just fucking try to follow him everywhere. Was, or everybody had the same reaction. Like if if you were playing and like me and you were playing, I picked the Jets or something, I see you even scroll over the Falcons and stop for a second, it's like don't even think about it, dude. Like would it like go to somebody else? You knew it was automatic, like SmackDown. If if you, it was a it was a dick move if you were pick, picking the Falcons and you were playing against like one of your boys. I broke so many controllers playing Madden. <laughs> I don't play anymore. I broke so many controllers. I broke it at uh, Cobble Skill at the tournament. Really? Oh, they had a Madden yeah. tournament. Well, I got cheated out. I was playing uh, Bronx. Really? And, yeah, I was. It was the semifinal, and it was one of those things where I was like, I. Uh, kickoff return it's like fourth quarter like one minute left i return it all the way to win the game and my my guy just freezes up at the 10 yard line oh like so legit like it was some legit like malfunction shit because yeah yeah wow does bronx does bronx give you credit for the dub or or, or he takes it i think he just left i think he just left i he i would have i would have flipped shit and like i wasn't big on like competitive video games like that like i would have never really entered a tournament but like if i did and i was at that point all oh, would have been it would have been over yeah i think i threw that <laughs> <laughs> i had a boy who actually like was like ranked in madden like he was like this like nerdy kid from high school who's like really smart now and i hope greg i hope you don't listen to this <laughs> but he was like ranked you're and smart, he though. you're smart very smart and like he would destroy he played online and then he went to some tournament and like got like i forgot how far he got but he was like very good and i think it was like right when like xbox live came out or whatever and i played against him once and he would just he would like pick the Bengals, and i would pick like the best team and he would just smack me silly it was crazy he was he was really good yeah i wasn't ever on that level so there's a lot of guys now who are just like that too there's no football league like there is for the NBA. Like you know how the NBA has the 2K league. Sports, yeah, I'm surprised by that actually. There, I don't know why is there not a NFL league. You would think, right? That was always the biggest game. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't know how in depth they can get with it. I doubt they're like the um, the NBA one where they're drafting, you know, six guys for a team, and every guy's put like, what are you going to be drafted as an offense alignment in video games? Yeah. <laughs> Like, no, seriously. like, you yeah. need a quarterback, a running back, some receivers. Maybe a tight end gets drafted, but like, even the tight end, like, what do you, what do you do? You know, yeah, yeah. you can't you physically block. block. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's got to just be like, and even receivers, though, maybe because it's not as like interest. I don't. How do you do that? Because it's like a receiver, you're a slot receiver, and you get drafted in this draft league. 
you run your route and don't get the ball thrown. You but like the computer <laughs> like sort of runs the route for you. No, you, the computer doesn't run the route for you. I guess you could sort of use your joystick to like maneuver around the defender and stuff and get open and the quarterback's got to hit you. I mean, this is like one way to be a pro gamer is, all right, just draft me as a lineman. I'll just stay there. <laughs> Imagine I think I kids. just hold the, the – That's, the that's what I'm saying. That's it. If, if they start an that's NFL good. 2K league and they have offensive linemen – I'll, that that'll be incredible. That'll I'm uh, in. uh, I could see a punter. Imagine being a punter. No, it'd be like you need a kicker though, right? A punter in real life, you don't get respected in real life. That's you what I'm saying. Respect. Imagine being the kicker in the NFL two K two K league. Like you don't you don't you just sit there with your controller in your hand for half the time and like you're getting paid. And then if you yeah. miss the kick, your team's gonna hate on you like crazy. Yeah. It's uh I, I guess, guess maybe because they gotta like figure some league. shit out, yeah. Or like maybe the quarterback also has to be the kicker or something. It's gotta be something like that. Like your receiver has to know how to kick. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm curious. I'm because sh- I'm sure there's gonna be a league soon. And also, oh no, I was gonna say if you're playing for like the Jets two K league team, do you have to play with the Jets? But then I s you're gonna be playing with like you're gonna be Matt, I'm gonna be Corrin. So, it's not like you have any advantage because the NFL teams. It's like the NBA, it's like the NBA one. The Knicks right. team won the championship one, and then you know the Spurs team. They're not. They don't have the Spurs roster. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Right, right. <laughs> um, anything you got? No, I think that went good. Yeah, I think we touched on a lot of stuff for a, a freaking slow ass sports week. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, like we said, keep writing comments. Um. Ask us questions. Fire it away. Matt's heavy in the chat. I check it out too. I'm just I, I gotta stop being lazy and write back also. <laughs> but um, sports buffet number two. Uh, we'll see you next week. Peace out, Matt. Later.